So I am um, pretty sure I know what, you, what kinds of resources you're looking for, and you are going to be doing, um, so basically for this assignment, you're starting with um, some genealogical research. So you are starting to find out about your family, where, how did your family get here? How did, you know, where did you end up here? And you're using that as a jumping off point for um, a way to do research um, within our databases and also to find resources that are gonna tell you about um, the larger migration that might have brought your family to the United States and who else might have done that. So we're looking for both personal research resources and we're looking for, um, and for, for like articles and books that talk about immigration in general about a particular, the re the, again, the same reason why you're here, why other people might have come here for the same reason. So that's what we're gonna do. And for this class, we do have a guide um, when I say a, a guide, we do have, a, um, our librarians do author guides, we call them library guides, and they are just websites where we suggest different resources that might be useful to you and your, um, for whatever that topic is. And so when we're here on the library's homepage, that's what we've been looking at so far. We can get to the guides a number of different ways. Um, we can look at the whole system of library guides. If we go up here to the, um, the gray bar for library, and then click on library guides. Um, and I will try and go a little slow because I know that sometimes there's a little bit of a lag with the video. Um, so I will try and go a little slow. So gray bar, library, and then library guides. And then if we scroll down to the bottom, you will see there's a number of different guides and you can look through these which, um, and to see what, you know, what sort of, um, what sort of guides we might have authored as in addition to this one, but you can also go over here and um, type family and click search. And it will take you to any of the guides that we've authored that have the word family in them. And researching family history is where we're gonna start. So we're going to researching family history. And on this, again, we really want to start with the genealogy aspect and then move towards um, and then move towards the online, um, not online, excuse me, um, the article research. So to start with the genealogy, you have to start with yourself. So you have to find some personal sources of information. Um, so a lot of times the easiest thing to do with this is to talk to people in your family. So if you, if you, um, you start with your parents, as this says, you can start with them. You can ask them, does, do you know of anybody who is doing genealogical research in our family? Um, is it possible, you know, is, does my, you know, is my aunt really interested in this? Maybe my aunt has traced my, our whole family history and then I can talk to her and find out how she's done it, what kinds of information she's found and where and why did we come here? Um, and so, you know, it just kind of depends, but if, but you, you just kind of want to start with, start having those conversations and asking people, um, what, what do they know? And I think you'll be surprised and see, um, you know, the kinds of stories that you get from, from your family and asking them, you know, who, you know, where, where, uh, just in general, the kinds of stories that you get from people. Um, so you can start with that and talk to people you might be able to. Um, and you might also find that your family has collected some of this information. So they might have collected it. Um, these, this says family correspondence. Correspondence is just another word for letters. So if there are any personal papers um, or any, you know, if you're, you know, say, you know, your grandfather was writing to, you know, while he was at war and he was writing to family members back home, you might be able to get some of those and they might be really interesting. Um, for you to read and to get an idea of, of what that person was doing and where were they in their, at that point in life. And then family photos can also be interesting to look at um, in terms of finding out, you know, where was this person and where, you know, um, they can be interesting, but they can also help you see, you know, maybe there's some people that show up a lot in, um, you know, over time you have all these family pictures and you can identify certain people and then you want to find, well, who are these other people who, um, who are also, you know, pictured with my family all of the time. So, and that might be a source for you to get some information. So starting with your family is important in terms of finding out um, where you might have come from. Um, in addition to that, though, and the kinds of things that we can help you here with um, finding in the, in the library are looking at this sources, published, unpublished, and online. Looks like somebody might have just joined, so I'm gonna very quickly mute. Okay. Um, and 
So for published, unpublished, and online sources, there are a number of different types of resources that you can find um, that might help you figure out when your family came here and, um, and other things like that. And so we do have um, a whole collection of newspapers. So newspapers are really nice because they do have all sorts of, as it says in this on this page, there are lots of things that have been tracked and that have been recorded in newspapers. And so if you can find birth notices or you might find marriage announcements, finding when, you know, and that will be helpful in terms of finding last names. So if you can trace one, one line of your history, you might wanna be able to then see some other last names if somebody married into a family. Um, a lot of times, uh, death notices or obituaries will be rich sources of information for the family tree. So if you can see, you know, a lot of times they'll say that this person is survived by, you know, their family and they'll actually list family members um, in those notices. And so newspapers are a great source, especially if you can find a local newspaper. If you have some idea where, um, you know, where your family ended up over the years, if you, you know, if you can, if you can pinpoint a specific, um, you know, local paper, then search within that um, to see if you can find any of those notices. We do have some different databases with, um, with newspapers. And so that link there does take you to a, our list of databases for newspapers. You will find um, that, um, with that, we actually we um, access World News is really helpful in terms of getting a lot a, a lot of different places, but it's more current. So um, so it is a huge database, but most of the article most of the articles within that database start in the 1980s. So if your family got here earlier than the 1980s, that one may not really be very helpful to you. So you can scroll down and you can see that we do have another database called Early American Newspapers that's from 1758 to 1900. So if your family is more, if your family migrated here in more in that time frame, you might find that this will be more useful for you. So if you click on it, you can, um, and again, I'll wait for it. Mine's actually taking a little while to load to start off, and then we might have the additional lag too. So, um, so when I look at America's historical newspapers, I can um, narrow my resources, by, or excuse me, narrow my searches by looking at particular places of publication. So I can look at particular states. I can see when they might have had different articles published from those different states. But we do have coverage from all 50 states um, from, that, from that older time period in this particular database. So that's one option. If I go back to my sources, of, um, to the guide, you can also see that um, some of these are some of these are fun, and some of them are also um, going to be really useful in tracing your lineage. So, if you are interested in looking for cemeteries and grave markers, findagrave.com is interesting. Um, you can type in a name, and you can see if you can find pictures of headstones. Headstones might have more information about them. They'll tell you where it was located. You can find out the cemetery, and you can get some more information that way. Um, one that I think that you'll find, I think most people will find useful, although you might not, um, you might have a, you might find a different resource, something like um, Ancestry.com might do this for you, but you can also search in the census records. So if you want to, there is a link here. Um, this does take you to the full, um, to the full census, which is located on the, in the National Archives. There's also um, a, uh, and the full census is important because which um, because it will actually give you names. It will give you um, it will give you the full content rather than just data and statistics about how many people. So if you're look um, so the census itself, I should probably mention what that is. There is a um, we do a decennial census. So every ten years, the um, the government does. Um, want to keep track of how many people are located in different places and they, they ask a number of different questions to keep track of who people are and where they came from and what they do and a lot of different information. But most of that information is sensitive information. And so we can't really search it in um, for in, um, genealogy purposes until a certain amount of time has passed. And so once um, and that's and so in that case, they do have a little bit of a, a lag where we can see the full census for 1940 and 1930 and, and before that, but we can't see anything, um, anything, any detailed information from the most recent census, which was from 2010, and we will be doing it again in 2020. So, um, so we can find information here, we can search it online. Um, so those are a couple of options. 
We can look for military records again. Um, oh. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I saw that there's a, a question in the chat box and I will get to that, Alyssa. Um, I'll finish this page and then I'll, I'll look at that. Um, so we, there are also military records. So if you know that your family wasn't, um, was, you know, if you do have a military history within your family and you want to find military records, the National Archives, again, does have a way to search for that. Um, and then you can also, um, and then, you know, you can continue to look down and see if there's any of these other things. So, um, so those are some sources that will help you to trace your history. Um, and let me look at the chat box. I'm going to, um, and if anybody, I, I think I will pause right here before we get into the specific resources um, and then searching elsewhere. So if anybody does have any questions, I would, um, I, I'm going to take a moment to pause and, and look at the chat box. I can put it over here. I think I can, I think you should be able to see that, but I'm looking at um, Ruby's question. So. Okay. Oh, okay. So I have seen, so in terms of Ruby's question where it's saying, do I know about the assignment um, itself? You've only been talk, told about, you know, looking for your family history, but you don't really know what this paper is on. I do know because I was, I, um, I have access to your Canvas course. And when I was looking through, I saw that the paper itself is due, I think it's in October. And when I looked at the calendar, um, within your Canvas course, you can click on the calendar, and then uh, it's uh, it's from the homepage, and then it will. T there is a link to the um, there is a link to the assignment instructions and what kinds of things you're going to be writing about um, within the calendar. If you look to, I believe it's October. Does that help, Ruby? And uh, does anybody else have any questions about resources so far? Okay, yeah, um, so you're referring to the modules, but um, but yeah, I did, because I was playing around because I was trying to find out, because I had I had some questions in a different, um, in a session earlier, one of the workshops I was doing about citations, and I, I wasn't really sure, so I was looking into it that way. All right, well, good. Okay, so we will, um, so it doesn't look like anyone else has any questions at the moment, so I'm going to move on to the specific resources. And with the specific resources um, tab, oh, it didn't click. Um, I hope you'll find this page pretty useful. Um, this is really where I think you'll spend most of your time on the guide, is looking at all the different resources that are linked. So this page does um, align pretty closely with the page that, was, that I was just showing, the one that talked about different types of sources, but this one has links to, um, it in, does include the links that I already looked at, but it includes more. So it does have more, and I think you'll find these, these useful. Um, there are several websites that are, in, that are entirely about genealogy. So with these websites, um, you've probably heard of Ancestry.com before. I did mention it earlier, but Ancestry.com is an online subscription database. So if you want to use it, you will need to, um, there is a free two-week trial that you can use, but you want to be careful because you want to make sure that all of the research that you're planning on doing will fall within that two weeks, or you want to make sure that you cancel your subscription if you don't want to um, unintentionally pay for it. You certainly might find it very useful and you might want to use it. I know in a, in a class that I was working um, with earlier this week, several people just had a subscription or their family did that they could they, that they could access. So if that's the case, by all means, free, feel free to use it. And I think you'll find it very helpful. If you don't want to um, do the subscription, then you can, um, a few of our local libraries, uh, our public, local public libraries, do have something called, uh, a database called Ancestry Library Edition. It is Ancestry.com. It doesn't include the idea where you, um, where you can, you know, really build and connect with people, but it does allow you to search all of the, um, all of the resources that they have access to. And you can also search with your name and it will, tell, it will help you tie in with your family tree. So you can use that. Ancestry Library Edition is available in library only. So if you go to the Jacksonville Public Library, that's the closest one. So um, if you um, go to the Southeast Branch, it's just on the other side of the town center. It's very easy drive. Um, and then um, 
I should say on the other side of the town center. It's off of Gate Parkway. Um, it's between Gate Parkway and Southside Boulevard. Um, and then there's also a Pablo Creek branch if you're used to going more out to the beach. There's Pablo Creek. Um, so those are very, um, very useful and, um, and hopefully you'll find that, um, you'll be able to use that resource. There's also another one that's similar to it is Family Search. Family Search is completely free. Um, you do need to create a free account, I think. Um, I can't remember now if you can just search. I'm going to try though, because, oh, there is just a search. Excuse me, <laughs> just a second. You can search. Um, you can just search the records. You can put in somebody's last name and you can, um, and you can just see what kinds of resources are available to you. Um, you can see that there are some different options. So you have um, options to look at mar births, marriage, residence, death, anything, and put in a place. You can also um, look at different relationships. So this does, um, this is a, a useful resource and you can create a free account or you can just search it without needing that. And they do have some different um, options up here for genealogies and creating family trees and things like that. Um, so if I go back to the specific resources, Ellis Island Passenger Search is really nice. So if you are, um, if you do know somebody who went through Ellis Island um, or somebody in your family went through Ellis Island, you can put the last name in here and it will search um, through 65 million different records. Um, so if I were to put my last name, which is actually a married name, but if I just put in Newton and click results, it will tell me all of the different people. So apparently there are more 10,000 exactly. I think that it probably killed, uh, ca capped out at 10,000. Um, I doubt there's exactly that many, but you can see there's lots and lots of Newtons and you can see when they came here and where they, um, where they came from and where and what ship. And so you can get some information and then you can look through the passenger record, the image of the ship and the ship manifest. So you can get some different information, again, if you know that your family came through Ellis Island. And there's a few others. Um, I should also mention that the National Archives, we've linked to the National Archives a couple of different places and a couple of different tabs within that. That's where the military records were and where the um, of oh, the 40, 1940 census was, but they also just have a page that says resources for genealogists, and it has a number of different um, links on here for places for you to, for, um, that will, that should hopefully help you. Okay, um, so those are just some of the websites. If you want to see more newspapers, you can get to those, and there's a number of different resources linked on here. One that I haven't really talked much about is this section for online books. So there are, um, there are published county histories. There are published family histories. You might find those. Um, and so you might just text, um, not text, um, play around with Google Books or Internet Text Archive. So those might have some resources. We also have a database called Accessible Archives Complete that has some published county histories um, that are useful for genealogy. So at this point, I want to shift um, and talk about the whole other piece of this, um, of this resource, with, of, of this assignment. Um, so you do need to, you need to have a jumping off point and you do need to have some records for your bibliography that tie to your family to a place. So, um, so you do need to have that. So that's why we spent so much time talking about this, but, you, but that's not the only step to this project. So another big piece of this project is just to pick one person you don't really, or one branch of your tree. You're not trying to, to um, identify every single branch of your tree for the next part. But what you want to do is you want to identify why did your family come here. So you can, if you know why one person within your within your lineage came to the United States, and you know why they came here, you want to then research that Mike that whole wave of migration. And so. Um, so I, I will go ahead and for the sake of time um, and with the technology, I'm going to just go ahead and do mine. So I know that um, my surname is O'Shields and I know that my family is Irish um, and I'm pretty sure they got here in the 1800s. And so while I, I don't actually know for sure, but I'm pretty sure that they came as a result of the Irish potato famine. And so what I can do now is I actually need to search to find resources that tell me about that whole migration wave and and put that in context. And that's, and that's a really big, that's the second half of your project is to put your migration story into context with the, with that, with everyone else. Um, and so 
for that, we are going to search in OneSearch. So there is a link to OneSearch right here. It's also on our library's main homepage, uh, or on our library's homepage. It's, a, it's um, available, and I can show you that in just a little bit. But right now, I'm just going to type in Irish potato famine. Oops. And click search. And I will find, um, in this case, I actually find something called a research starter. Um, so research starters are kind of our answer to Wikipedia. Um, it's not the exact same thing, but basically what it is, it is a, an encyclopedia article that comes from a scholarly encyclopedia, one that's not going to change. Um, so it, there's, it's not subject to, to change unless it's been reviewed by an expert. So there is a difference there. Um, in terms of Wikipedia versus this. But usually they come from, a lot of times they come from something called Salem Press Encyclopedia, which is an, a scholarly encyclopedia. And I can read about this, um, read about this um, migration period. I can read about the Great Irish Famine. I can see key figures, and these are people that I might want to do research into and find out, um, you know, I might want to do that. I might want to look at a summary of it. It might link me to other resources um, that will help me understand um, my family's reason for migrating in relation to everybody else. And so I can use this. It does usually include a bibliography, so you can, you know, um, look, you know, you can look at these sources, try and find them yourself if you want to use these. Or what I think you can do is from here, you have a, you have some different terms where you could, um, you know, change your search history and do something a little different. I might also want to change my search history and put in migration. And, and migration. And see if, um, and actually in this, I already saw, I, maybe I should change it to, instead of Irish potato famine, I should do great Irish famine, which is what that, that last one was calling it. So great Irish famine and migration. And, um, and that's, and this is actually nice. So I've got an, I've got an ebook right here that I can access that says relocated memory, the great famine in Irish and D diaspora fiction. So that's about fiction, but I could also see which Irish men and women immigrated during the Great Famine migration of 46 to 54. So there's a number of different resources here um, that are linked. And this is just a real quick search. If you know anything more specific or any more people specific, you can see that I happen to be looking at 24,000 results here. Um, so that's a lot of results to wade through. So if I wanted to narrow this by a specific type of resource, book, or if I wanted to look at articles, or, or if I wanted to put in some different topics, um, I can change that. But for any of these different resources, if you're looking to get, um, if you're looking to find the resource, um, if you haven't used OneSearch before, usually it does give you the title of the resource. We can find out what type of resource it is by looking at the icon. So in this case, it's an academic journal article. And I can read um, to see what journal this came from. So it came from the American Economic Review, was published in 1994. So this is an older journal article. Um, here's my, here are some subject headings that talk to me, that tell me what the article is about. So in this case, it's about an ethnography, it's about human migration, it's about the economic impact of the Great Irish Famine. So these are all different um, things that clue me in as to what this article is going to be about. And then I can click PDF full text, and it will take me to the full article. So I'm curious, has anyone used OneSearch before? If you can tell me in the chat box if you've used OneSearch before or done any resources. Okay, so nope. All right. Um, anyone else? Have you used this before? All right. So hopefully um, that, oh, wow, so a lot of people haven't. So, um, so I will mention, I think I already did, but just to put this more in context, and actually, so everyone can see it other than outside of that guide. Um, there is, a, so I'm back on our library's website. If you remember, I started here to go to our library guides, and I went to the family research guide. But there is a, um, this blue box in the center, I keep pointing, but you can't see my pointing, I'm sorry. This blue box here um, does search OneSearch. Um, so right here, I can, if, if I do the exact same thing, so Great Irish Famine and Migration, I'm just for sake of time, I'm just going to stop, stop there. Um, it will take me to the exact 
same place. And I get to a number of different resources. And this is going to be our largest database here at UNF. Um, it has a large collection of resources that hopefully you'll find useful for your resources uh, for your research. It does include um, books, it includes scholarly journals, it includes magazines, newspapers, videos, all sorts of different stuff, um, including research starters. So, um, so with that, I'm going to pause. We only have a few minutes left.